So the big question is how do health experts like you and I generate more income, impact more people and create businesses that work around their lifestyle and serve their family at the highest possible level? If you want the answer to that question, then you're in the right place at the right time. Whether you're a dietitian, a nutritionist or a nutrition coach, this is for you. My name is Dr. Javier Carlin and I want to welcome you to the practice revolution. We are a movement that is revolutionizing the way private practices are built so you can practice on your terms. So go ahead and join us and follow along as we learn, apply, and share the top business growth strategies that we're using to grow our own business and to help you grow yours using only the best insights and advice from top industry leaders. So thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, everyone. All right, I think we are live and ready for action. Uh, and so for those of you who don't know who we are, my name is Javier Carlin, I'm a doctor in physical therapy. Uh, this is Marissa, and she's a dietitian. And together we are the co-founders of the Practice Revolution, where we help dietitians and nutrition coaches to replace their income, have the confidence to break free from their J-O-B, and get to the point where they're making six figures and beyond in their business. And so if that's you, if that's what you want, then you're in the right place at the right time. And we're so excited to have you here today. So what are we talking about tonight? So tonight, we're talking about the lessons that we've learned from our $50,000 mastermind event that we went to in the castle. Now we have pages and, and pages and pages and literal pages of notes from this, but we took three key ones, which we feel really, really apply to you all here. Um, and we want to share those with you. Some of them we kind of discovered and came to on our own as we were just talking throughout the mastermind weekend and networking with people. And we had these like epiphanies. Um, others we actually learned from the mastermind itself. So we're going to be sharing three of those uh, with you guys tonight. Yeah, million dollar secrets, baby. And what we'll do is we'll start to sprinkle these every single week for you. Okay, so you can so we can share with you what exactly the top 1% of people on the planet are doing uh, to build their wealth, but also to help a lot of people. How many of you would love to help a lot of people? Love it. Love it. Yeah. And if we gave them all away tonight, we'd literally be here for three days. Yeah. Like we were in the castle. So we, we literally don't have time for that. For sure. Um, for sure. But awesome. Awesome. I see it at super engaged group. I love it. I love the energy creeping the energy tonight. Um, let's dive in. Let's do it. Let's, let's dive it. in. Okay. So lesson number one is to try different marketing angles. And so we'll give you a little background story about the, about how we came up with this. Um, and this was kind of our epiphany uh, as we we're sitting there with a couple other people in the mastermind and all these business owners are making like over a million dollars a year. And we're like, we had this like epiphany, right? Which is try different marketing angles. Okay, so here's kind of the story behind this lesson, right? So what happened was we're at this mastermind. It was like lunchtime. Everyone's like taking a break, eating, drinking, whatever. They had food and drinks for us. Um, and so they had a bunch of LaCroix. And so we're sitting there, we're talking, having a great time. And Javi was, was drinking this LaCroix and it was Pamplemousse. And he- Does anyone know what Pamplemousse <laughs> is, by the way? Does anyone know what Pamplemousse is? A billion dollars from the pers first person who gets it in the chat. We might be pronouncing it incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, ah, oh, Meg got it. Meg, did you cheat? Oh, some, did people, you cheat? some people know what it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> do you cheat? <laughs> okay, so we didn't know this, but Pamplemousse, not sure if I'm pronouncing it right because it's French, but it's French for grapefruit. Okay, so stick with us here. So Javi is drinking this pamplemousse thing. And all of a sudden, he's just like, hmm, pamplemousse. <laughs> and then it, but I had drank this, <laughs> this drink before. Like I've had pamplemousse uh, LaCroix before, but we were at a marketing event. I'm like, pamplemousse, what the heck is pamplemousse? I don't know, but it tastes delicious. <laughs> and so there was, there was like five of us sitting there at the table and five of us had no idea what that meant and so of course what do we do we start googling it and we're like guys it's grapefruits 
like they just they it's just grapefruit <laughs> and so and so for us all of us i think our first our second our first reaction was wow it's grapefruit like why didn't they just call it grapefruit and then our and, and and to and to add to that like i don't like grapefruit juice and that was our second epiphany oh yeah and that was our second that epiphany, second epiphany. Is all five of us went grapefruit ew <laughs> <laughs> and so and so it was pretty funny because all five of us and it's it's not common to have five people that don't like the same flavor but all five of us were like ew grapefruit because I personally don't like grapefruit flavor things it's not something that I typically gravitate towards if there's other flavors I'll typically go for something else um Javi same with him same and then thing. the three other people there and we were all like hmm so why are we drinking this and why do we like it if it's grapefruit. Mm. So that was one of the first questions um, we were asking ourselves. And so we were talking about it and we kind of had this epiphany that now we don't know, this is us assuming, right? We don't know the reason why LaCroix decided to name it Pamplemousse instead of grapefruit. But in our minds, we were just like, hmm, like from a marketing perspective, right? Why did they do this? Well, maybe because there's five of us saying, ooh, we don't like grapefruit. And maybe they tried marketing it as grapefruit flavored in the past. And maybe they didn't have great sales. Like we're all hype, like making like hypothetical scenarios, but that's kind of what you do with this marketing event. Like all of our wheels are turning and we're all like trying to think about like marketing and sales and like all this fun stuff. And so we were like, hmm, if LaCroix originally, like maybe they originally marketed as grapefruit, and maybe there wasn't a big market for grapefruit and maybe they had less sales, mm. right? But then maybe LaCroix said to themselves, the marketing team, hmm, this grapefruit flavor, it tastes really good, but we're not getting a lot of sales. Like I have this great product, I have this great service, right? But like, why, why aren't more people buying, right? And these blind taste tests, like it did really well, but why aren't people buying it? And then maybe they said to themselves, how can we call it something different, something fun? And maybe that's where they came up with the pamplemousse, right? Yeah. And it's stuck. It's a flavor that flies off the shelves these days. It got you drinking it. It got all of us drinking and it. Grape, and we hate grapefruit, right? <laughs> and so what does that have to do with, with business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so and so the, the moral of the story, okay, is that you can have a great product, something so amazing, right? That people can't wait to drink or can't wait to have, right? But if it's marketed wrong, if you don't have a sexy, appealing name, something different, then no one will buy it. No one will buy it because they have a prior preconce preconception of what that thing is. And they'll think, oh, I've tried that before. It didn't work. Okay. And so the lesson for you here is with everything that you do, OK, you want to think about what is a different angle that I can I can market my product, my service, my programs, et cetera. That's different from everyone else that keeps someone curious enough to take a peek and to start a conversation with you. OK, because if you're marketing like everyone else, then you're going to be just, you know, lost in the crowd. And if you're lost in the crowd, you're not going to get the business that you want. And so the people that you want to serve are not going to be able to get the help that they deserve. Okay. And so that's lesson number one, pretty powerful, right? Kind of crazy how that came about, but it, it comes, it, it just, it just the packaging of what you have, right. Is so, so important. Otherwise people will just ignore it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the packaging quote unquote could be a physical product, mm -hmm. right? It could be even a service right? It could be your nutrition coaching. It could be um, a lead magnet, a PDF, like anything that you are providing to people, we have to kind of package it up and make it quote unquote sexier, come at it from a different angle than everyone else in the industry. So it's different. Okay. For example, like a weight loss program, mm -hmm. right? If you're marketing to moms, Okay. Instead of saying, Hey, this is a weight loss program. How many people out there have weight loss programs, right? Thousands, if not millions of people, Totally. right? So what can you call it instead? Maybe it's the mommy makeover method, right? If you're working with moms. Okay. And so again, same thing, different name, 
Okay. So that's how you can actually implement this in your business today and automatically get more people seeing what you have to offer and more people interested in what you have to offer. Pretty cool. Right. And so that's number one. Okay. So, um, if you guys found value, first of all, in lesson number one, right. Trying different marketing angles, just comment value down below. Let us know that that was, that was helpful for you guys. Perfect. So lesson number two, is treat your business like a business. And you're probably like, okay, yeah, cool. That makes sense. Okay, let me explain the story here. So like I said, we were driving to this mastermind. So we actually drove from Tampa to Franklin, North Carolina. It was about 14 hours. And so on the way, we got a little hungry, right? We got a little hungry. And so we stopped in the absolute middle of nowhere, Georgia, I don't know where we were. Our GPS took us to like this cute little coffee shop. This town, I mean, you could stand in one place and you can see all the all the buildings in the towns. It was like two shopping centers, two tiny little shopping centers, and that was it. And then nothing for miles. Like the highway was like 20 miles away, literally in the middle of nowhere, okay? And so we stopped at this coffee shop, um, but we were like hungry and we wanted some actual food. So we asked the guy behind the counter, the, the barista, um, we were just like, hey, like, what's good around here? And he's like, okay, listen, you got two options. Your two options, literally two options. He's like, you could go to Sheila's, which has like such good sandwiches. Like they're really nice, like gourmet, like really good. Or you can go to this like old, it's called the old saute store. Um, he's like, it's right there. You can walk to both of them. And that one's like, okay. And we were like, we're hungry. Like we've been driving all day. We have like a couple more hours to go. We're going to be in the mountains. Like we need some food. So where do you guys think we went? Do you think we went to Sheila's, really good sandwiches? Or do you think we went to the old saute store? We went to Sheila's. Well, we attempted to go to Sheila's, right? And he's like, they're both walking distance. Just go out here, make a right, and you'll see them both. And so we start walking to Sheila's because we were like, we're hungry. And we want some good food because that's what he told us. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we want some good sandwiches. We walk to Sheila's and we get there and they're closed. And we're like, are you kidding me? Like now we're hangry, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we got to drive more. I was like, I am so hungry. Like, I just want a sandwich. We were like, he sold us on these sandwiches. Like we saw pictures of them online. We were like, oh, so good. They're closed. So we had no choice but to go to the old saute store. And so store was super cute. And I remember the guy had told us too, he's like, the old saute store is the oldest business in this town. It's been around um, since 1870 something. It's like 150 years old. It's like 150 years old. If you actually look it up on Google Maps, it literally says it's a historic landmark. Like that's how long this thing has been around. And so we go in, it's this tiny little store, super cute, actually had really good sandwiches. Yeah, um, great. they were just small like tiny, tiny, about four bites and it was like, done. Yeah. But they were, <laughs> they were pretty good. And so we're sitting there and we're eating lunch and we had a couple of epiphanies there. Mm -hmm. You want to share some of the epiphanies that we had about? Yeah. Yeah. And so, business? and so it's so interesting because this actually didn't just happen to us there, but it had happened to us a few times before. Right. And so what we realized was this is mind you, not the best right? Not the best sandwich spot whatsoever. It was good. They were good. It was good. But it, but even according to the person at the other, at the coffee shop said that they were okay. Right. But this business had been there for 150 years, 150 years. Everybody say that's a long time. Go ahead that's and put a that's a long time in the chat. Right. And so they were there for 150 years. And so what, what's the difference, right? When we were hungry, they were available, okay? And so this does not mean you have to be available 24 seven, but they treat their business like a business. And that is why they were there for us when we needed it, okay? Whereas the other store that was closed, I think they were closed like- They were, okay, so the other store, just to, to add to this, the other store, Sheila's, that had the great sandwiches, I looked online, they were actually closed three days per week. So they were only open like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and only for like four hours a day. So a very small window of opportunity for them to take business. Whereas the old saute store was actually open seven days a week. And not a long, I, I would say, I think their website, I believe was like, they were open six to seven hours a day. So mm -hmm. not crazy amount of time for business, but they were open. 
way yeah. more like twice the amount of Sheila's. Yeah. And so I think, I think the big lesson from this is if you want to have a successful business and a successful business that's there for the long haul, right. That doesn't just take care of you and your kids, but takes care of like their kids and grandkids and, and really like a legacy business, right. That takes care of your family for years to come. You need to start treating your business like a business and not like a side hustle. Okay. And so what that means is it doesn't mean you're working 24 seven by any means. It means that when you start to think like a business owner, as opposed to like a dietitian, or in my case, like a physical therapist, like we are taught and trained to think like, I have to be the one doing the things 24 seven. And it's a constant uh, trade of time for money, right? When you start to think like a business owner, you could be open seven days a week, but guess who's not working seven days a week? You, right? You can be serving people every single day of the week, but it doesn't have to be you. It could be someone on your team, okay? And so and so we have to start to shift that mindset if we really not just want to be successful and, and, and stay with it for the long haul, but if we really want to help other people. Because how many of you know when you get hangry, it's not a fun time, right? And so the old saute store, they saved us. <laughs> they saved us, okay? And so, and so uh, just really think about that. Right, because if you're not having the success that you want, you might still be thinking of your of your quote unquote business like a little side hustle. And if you treat it like like a side hustle, it's going to produce like a side hustle, and you're never going to get the freedom and flexibility that you want. Okay, so from now on, flip that switch, start thinking bigger, and think how can I serve people on a daily basis, but how can I do it without me personally having to do it. Okay. And so those are two questions that are going to help you buy back your time, impact more people and make a lot more money. Okay. Because you can literally double or triple what you're making. If you just open up a few more days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And whatever context that looks like for you. Yep. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So number three, lesson number three, before we wrap up for tonight, um, is proximity is key and making sure that you are in the right room. Okay, so to give you guys a little bit more context, like we said, um, this mastermind, it was about 30 business owners, and majority of these business owners were making seven figures, eight figures, yeah. so a million dollars a year, $10 million a year, and beyond that. Yes, they made a lot of money um, in all different industries, in health, in fitness, um, in there were people there from like pageants, there were people there um, from like products, like people that sold watches online, people that sold We watches. actually even met one of your peers. Uh, how many of you know who uh, Joe, Joe Leach is? So Joe, he owns Diet Versus Disease. You can find him on Instagram. Uh, we actually met uh, Joe Leach, who's a dietitian. He owns a company uh, and he's doing really well. He has about 13 or he said about 20 people, I believe, on his team. Uh, we're actually meeting up with him tomorrow for dinner. Yeah, so it was absolutely amazing. Um, 30 business owners and every single person in that room paid a minimum. Oh, I think this is important. Go for it. Uh, Joe Leach, by the way, who's a dietitian, just like many of you here, or you know, in those in the nutrition space, uh, he makes about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per month. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I didn't say per year, per month. Okay, so what does that mean for you? It means that if it's possible for him, guess who else it's possible for? It's possible for you. Okay, it's possible for you. And so that's part of the power of being in the room, right? Proximity is power. Because if you were there with him that weekend, you would have been able to see, oh, wow, he's a dietitian, a guy dietitian, very few of them to begin with. A guy right? A guy dietitian, right? And he's freaking crushing it in the industry. What does that mean? I got to learn from him. I got to do what he's doing. Right. And so it becomes possible for you too. very, very important to, to start to pick up on that. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And so, so we're in this room with some pretty big people, like multimillionaire, multimillionaires, you know, we're all masterminding all weekend. We had some sessions where we were, um, you know, learning from our coach, right. And his team members, but we also had many sessions where we were just networking with each other, collaborating with each other, giving each other feedback and ideas, 
for each other's businesses. And it was so cool because we're all in different businesses. We're all, we all serve different clients. Some of us have physical products. Some of us do digital products. Some of us are more coaching and consulting, right? It's a wide range of businesses, but here we are like really big players, all sharing ideas and all helping each other to lift each other up and to grow our businesses so that all of us can impact more people, right? So it's really cool to see the collaboration. And so the question for you guys becomes, who do you guys surround yourself with daily, weekly, monthly? Who do you guys surround yourself with, right? Do you guys go out there and put yourself in the right rooms, whether they're physically rooms, right? Or they're virtual rooms, right? How often do you do it? Now, I know a lot of you guys work a nine to five, right? And Javi and I didn't start off like this. We didn't start off in these high level masterminds with all these business owners, but we definitely started to put ourselves out there and just put ourselves in different rooms. Like even to this day, we still go to um, a, a local uh, entrepreneur social club, right? With local business owners and just get out there, network. And because when you see people doing big things in all different industries, you start to think different. And you start to believe that it's truly possible for you because I know when I was a dietitian working in my clinical office, no windows, the only people I surrounded myself every single day were my coworkers, eight hours a day. And that's all that I knew for those eight hours was inside that wall. Other than that, I went home, did some homework, went to the gym, went to sleep. That's it. Yeah. And so remember, it, what, is, what is that famous phrase, right? You're the average of the five people, that's 10, five, five people you hang around with most, okay? And so here's here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down in the chat right now, okay? You don't have to put their full name, but just like for you to think about them, who are the five people in your life that you spend the most time with, okay? And so here's here's what we ended up finding out for us. It was me and Marissa, which is awesome, right? Because we have the same mindset, but still limited in that we don't know what we don't know. And then it was Bella and Blue, our two cats. We spent the most time with them. And then who was the fifth person? I don't even know if we had a fifth person. Yeah. I really think that was it. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, right. And obviously we put ourselves in these positions where we go to these masterminds. We have a, a ton of virtual rooms that we create or that we buy into as part of coaching programs. Right. And so we do that. But even then we're like, hmm, maybe we have to like, take the cats out of our inner circle, right? And add some higher level people in there. <laughs> and I'm, I'm playing around here, but you kind of get the point, right? And so and so, if you start looking at those people, are those the people you're listening to on a daily basis? Are those the people that you're letting uh, tell you what you can and can't do? Are those the people you're always, always hanging out with? Because if you're hanging out with them all the time, doesn't mean you have to disown them, right? But if, if you hang out around those people day in and day out, you're going to be the average of those people. That's just how it works. Okay. And so you have to, as uncomfortable as it can be, sometimes you have to be willing to push yourself out of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to get outside of the circle that you've been in for so long. Right. And maybe you are in another mastermind or coaching program. Right. But it's, it's been like the same circle for a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, you're not going to learn a lot of different things, right? From different types of people. And I think one of the key things that we learned is that even like Marissa was saying, in all these different industries, all these different businesses, what stay the same? The principles stay business the same. Principles. Business principles stay the same in every single business. Okay. And so you start to see like when we tell you stuff from our perspective, Right. Even though, yes, we ha we've had the practices and whatnot. Right. Everything works for every different business. You just have to figure out how to make it work. OK. And so you start to learn these things while you're there. Yeah. And so and so you want to go over the last point? Yeah. So two options for these rooms. Right. Very simple. Option number one is buy yourself in. Number two is work your way in. OK, we did not always have the funds to invest in these high level masterminds. So what did we do? We worked ourselves into these smaller rooms first. Right. And we built up our business to the to where we could start investing in these higher level masterminds. Right. So you don't have to start with the super, super high level mastermind with like, you know, six and seven and eight figure earners. Like, I don't think anyone starts there. Mm -hmm. Right. You start small, start in your local community. But the point is that you just have to 
take a step out. You just have to venture out of your circle and start expanding your network. And just to clarify, if you did invest in something like that right off the bat, guess what? You'd be better off putting that 50K to be in that room than putting in 50K to be to have gone through the schooling system that that we all went through. <laughs> Think about that, right? Think about it because we've already invested that kind of money. It's just that it produced and guaranteed the results that we wanted. Some people graduate from school and don't even get a job. Like that system is just broken, right? We put 50K in here and we were guaranteed at least a 5X our investment back, right? Which we crushed. <laughs> and so and so it's it's also about like, yes, you 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 could do those things. You just have to figure out if you want it bad enough how to make those things happen, right? Because when you get in that room, different level of mindset, different level of action mm -hmm. and different level of results. Proximity is power, okay? Proximity, Proximity is, power. is power. Because it just elevates the way that you think, it elevates the way that you believe, and it elevates what you believe is possible. And that allows you to take actions at a much higher level. And when you start taking those different actions, you start getting much different results, better results that can change your life forever. Okay. So perfect. We'll leave it at that. All, All right. right. Take Hope care, everyone. There. See you guys Have next a great time. night. Hey, what's up? Thank you so much for watching the show. I know your time is super valuable and I know that you're here to learn how to grow a successful practice. So I have something special just for you. If you are a health expert who is in business or aspiring to be, and you're curious about how to grow a profitable, impactful practice, you're going to want to pay attention because as a person who is watching the show, I want you to win. So I've created a bundle of resources exclusively for those who are watching The Practice Revolution. So if you are tired of trying to figure out this game of business, marketing, and sales all on your own, and you're ready to implement what's already proven to work, rather than reinventing the wheel, you're going to want to send us a private message on Instagram at The Practice Revolution. And simply just let us know that you watch this show and we'll personally hand over $7,000 worth of trainings, resources, and coaching that is available only for those who are watching this show on YouTube. So if you want to know how to increase your income impact and build a practice that works for the lifestyle that you want and that serves your family at the highest level, send us a private message on Instagram at the practice revolution. Do it now so you can win big in your practice and in your life. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next show.